Oh, I better turn some lights on. There. Hello. I hate those charts. <laughs> Fancy word documents. I um I just sent you an email that said, do you want to make me co-host tonight? And then I can share that file. Sure. I mean, you could share it too, but right. if I shared it, then I can put it where I want it to be. Right. Yes. Okay. Oh, I made you co-host. There you are. That's so easy. Um, okay. So um, I think I want to add. Um, so Lauren and, and Andrea looked at the um, building program again. Um, mm -hmm. And they pointed out that those charts were wonky, but they had it before you even tried to fix the charts. Um, um, and the one area that they keep saying there needs to be more room is the circulation desk. And so I think we should add, it's at 240. Um, and we don't have to do this tonight. We can do it, you know, I can send an email to the trustees and we can do it Monday yeah. night. But I think we should make it 300. Because, um, you know, you need, we need a, a, you know, a freestanding copy machine that people can use on their own. We need room for patrons to stand in front of the desk. Um, and, and if we add 60 feet, and then we have to add another 30% of that, which is um, not very many feet, 20 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it 18 or is it 20? It's 18. No, it's 20. It's something. I think it's 18. Yeah. And I think if it was a third, it would be 20. Okay. But this is, right. uh, when I was in high school, maybe it was before high school, I was one of the math whizzes. And all that meant was that I could rattle this off quicker than anybody else. And then they put me on new math and everything went downhill from there. I have to think about it now. <laughs> yes. Um, but um, so anyway, you know, that's just one thing I think we should do, but we'll see. We do have um, a few people, a few more people who have um, asked for the link. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. I want to just check my email and um, okay, that's the email asking. Um, Okay, good. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see how many come. Um, and other than that, I, I worked on the financial stuff today and then I sent it to George Arvinitis, who's on the finance committee to make sure that the way I was explaining things made sense to him. And then I sent it to, and he had a few questions, um, which I've sent to Becky. And then I sent it to Lauren and Andrea because they said I can send them anything. Um, and so I wanted to see, I just said, what questions does this raise for you? Um, and, um, and, and not a lot of questions, um, but, you know, but some, but one was, you know, so we have like different cash reserves. The town has different reserves and then the town has borrowing capacity. Um, and one question was, um, you know, does this mean that this is all slated for the library? And it's no, it's just possible for the library, you know, and, and we can't really know um, like until we have a cost estimate and they are, they are, they're, they are hiring a professional cost estimator. Um, so that'll be helpful. Um, so that'll be good. I looked at trying to compare things to the schematic and the <laughs> cost estimate and it breaks. The, uh, there's, it, the cost estimate is so complicated Right. I, I can't right. go from from these things to that stuff. Right. right. Comparing right. Yeah. base, that's that's fine. Yes. 
Yes. Well, and then that cost estimate was 10 years ago too. Yeah. And, yeah. and at the time, out of all of the grant applications we had, I believe it was the highest cost per square foot. Um, oh, really? And some of that was the finishes, um, you know, hardwood floors, a standing seam metal mm -hmm. roof. Um, mm -hmm. And some of it is economy of scale. Um, it costs more yeah. to build less. Yeah, um, it so does. I'm gonna yeah. plug in. How you doing? I'm okay. We, it's exciting here now. Our daughter just came home. She's been off at college. So Where is she in uh, college? So I, she's at UMass Boston. Nice. Oh, UMass I knew that. Boston I knew that. Yeah, you told me that in the open house. Yeah. Very excited. Oh, Susan, you're, you're sideways. Yeah, you know, I've never been sideways before. I'm not really <laughs> sure what to do. Are, are you on a phone? <laughs> no, I'm on my laptop. You're on your laptop, but it's sideways. Well, we, we can all join you. That's <laughs> that would be nice. Got any suggestions about, oh, let's see, somewhere. Let me stop the video and start again. Hi, Susie. Hey there. Oh. <laughs> I, I can see your name. I assume you're there. I think I think I will um, stop my video and just be here. As, okay. Be a person. Okay. It's too um, dis. It's too disconcerting. Right. I'm gonna look. Well, I'm not gonna. Nevin's gonna show up any minute now, Susan. We can ask. He will help me. <laughs> he might be able to tell you what to do. <laughs> Oh, great. <clears throat> oh, that's nice. You can see laundry baskets behind me. That's... <laughs> you can see my files and yes. piles. I'm, this is my office, but it's mm -hmm. also the basement of the house. Um, so it would, I, I if it would make space. you feel better, I can um, point my computer towards a, a mess. <laughs> <laughs> we can all feel at home. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Let's go sit over here. I was I was at physical therapy um, yesterday morning, and um, we were talking about getting the house ready for Thanksgiving guests and. So most, so I almost always host Thanksgiving and I use it as an excuse to do a deep cleaning of the house every year. I take down the curtains and wash them. I move all of the furniture out from the walls and, you know, clean behind all of the furniture. I clean the oven and the refrigerator, you know, I empty the refrigerator, I empty the baking cabinet and clean it all. And last year, I didn't host Thanksgiving because it was COVID and none of that happened. And none of that, well, I did clean the refrigerator, um, but none of the rest of that stuff is gonna happen. So, um, and there's a whole table of um, library stuff for making kits for kids um, in a room. And, and I thought that that was going to get put away, but that's not going to get put away. <laughs> but maybe I'll have my guests make kits. <laughs> there you go. Free labor. Okay. I used to live in a very isolated place in California. I was actually in a vineyard. Um, and my nearest neighbor was a mile or so down the road. And one Thanksgiving, we cleaned our oven and, and didn't put it back right. We could not cook our thanksgiving turkey we had to take it a <laughs> mile down the road and put it in the oven that was down at that house <laughs> she was very smart so we're um we have a goodly group um Ooh, it's just after seven okay. shall we shall we get started yeah yeah okay yeah. with everyone so um i i'm gonna take the lead on this because i was um most involved in creating the um the chart and in fact all if i can find it again i think this is the chart yes 
So this is up on our website. Can you all see my chart? It's always a little bit odd. Yep. Will it help if I make it bigger? Yes. We can do that at the top of our screen under view options. It's funny, I don't have, oh, view is over here. I'm not sure I have that on my phone. Everyone can adjust their own screen at the top. When you go to the top of the screen, you can come up with view options. Does that make it bigger? Yes, yeah, that's, that's much correct. bigger. People that's on great. a phone can't do that, Susie. Uh, um, right. But but Brad made it a lot bigger, which is great. Right. Is that readable now? Sorry. It's weird. When I'm sharing my screen, I don't have view options. Uh, so I don't know that I can make it any bigger than that. Um, so um, what we were asked to do, what this was built for, was to give some kind of comparison to how spaces changed. And so we have a list of spaces on the left. And then the current building program, it's gone through many drafts and we're probably up to draft six, but I think draft six was just fixing typos. I don't think any of these things changed yet, but we're not done. And so the thing in this column, this may change. I don't expect it to change much. And then 2009 building program, that seemed the best comparison to the past. And that, of course, that was just the final, they went through similar changes, but that was the final one for that. And then I have a column for change. And if there was no change, I just left it blank. Um, and I'll tell you what this is in a minute. Um, so that's the basic model. Then the issue with making the comparison for me was um, the two different 2009, 2029, they broke space up in different ways. Um, and what I did was, um, for instance, adult collections uh, in, I don't actually remember which one was which now, but in one of them, audio and video, adult audio and video was split out in another computer area was split out and another they were combined. So I just took all the similar spaces dissimilarly uh, listed and put them in one line so that it could be comparable. So whenever you see the bracket, you need to understand that in one of these two and possibly both in different ways, they might have been split. Um, we were just talking about, oh, circulation desk. Uh, so in our current model, what this actually is, is we have one line for the circulation desk and another line for reception and browsing, but that wasn't true in 2009. <laughs> they just had one line for everything for both of those. So I put them together um, and storage, uh, director's office and staff room. So that's the purpose of those brackets. I was doing the best I could to take slightly dissimilar lists and to make them comparable. Um, we are adding the small study room this year. It didn't exist before. We are not having a local history room. And so that's why this is blank this time around. But these are all the comparable numbers that's one part of my overview. Another, I get to this word assigned and the way the MBLC does things, they look at certain spaces and they want to see them all delineated. And then there's certain other spaces which they don't need delineated. And the trouble for me in making this chart was that from one year to the next, from 2009 to 2021, the, the list of what was assigned or not changed, or at least the understanding of it changed. So this really is set up with the current model breakdown of all these things. And then over here on the right, 
I have assign, A for assigned and U for unassigned, just to show you how it changed. Um, and I have the totals for all these assigned indoor areas, comparable indoor areas. And you can see that so far, at least we're um, smaller than 2009 by 477 feet. Um, I think we'll end up being smaller, but it, we're, it's, these things change in little increments. And then um, what? The, the, the MBLC takes this kind of information and then they have an allowance and the allowance changed as well, or at least the way we dealt with it changed. So this section two is the using the modern, the 2021 model in both cases. And you can see again, we, I've added 30% of this space and I end up with these numbers. And you know, when I'm adding space, it's gonna mean that the difference is larger. Um, and then down below in section three, this is the model that was used in 2009. And it's, it's a little interesting we're 30% of allocated of this. In the 2009, it was 25% of the total, which is actually 33% of allocated. Um, and it makes it not easily comparable. But anyway, I broke them down in both cases. Um, and now I can't remember why I hired <laughs> that one. I have to get there. Then outdoor program areas are separately counted. This 718 is an estimate. It's my measurement of the schematic, which was actually after 2009. And I put that in because there was no number and I just wanted something comparable. So I used what the design size was for this one. Um, they didn't have an outdoor storage area. And then 2009 included these other itemized spaces, which are not assigned, weren't assigned then, they aren't assigned now, we didn't do them. Um, so that's my overview. I could give you more details of all that, but I would ask questions you have now. Anyone have a particular Kate? What would yeah, you... thank you so much, Brad. This is a lot to take in. It was a lot for us to come up with. And I think Brad did a great job of explaining why we are operating under different sets of standards from the MBLC in a couple of areas. There were, for example, there was, for example, a particular library building standard that we were using in 2009, and that standard has changed for 2021. There was a requirement for a um, percentage of uh, space that was required to be unassigned in, 20, in 2009. That's a different percentage in 2021. So it was very difficult to come up with like a truly apples to apples. Uh, comparison and what Brad's done, I think, does a really good job of showing how the different standards play into the differences that we see in the square footage of the various building programs. So um, I just, I really appreciate, there's a, a lot of people did a lot of work on this. Tim Logan and Michelle Regan-Ladd, also among the trustees, did a lot of work on this along with Brad and of course, Marianne. And I, I understand it because we worked on this for a long time and we've discussed it for several weeks, but um, but I understand that it's also there. And I'm glad that Brad's here to answer some questions. Thank you. Any other questions on these comparisons? Uh, Carolyn. Um, I wonder if you could highlight um, not just the numeric differences, but the difference, different focus of the program now for these, these things that changed. So, you know, something uh, that wasn't important in 2009 that is important now, for example. Um, I think Marianne can answer that better than I do. 
Um, right. uh, what I would say is things like, well, we, we added a space that didn't exist. It was felt for a number of reasons. Some of the, many of the comments we get, we got asked for, it, to me, this was very interesting. There were, there were requests for many different things. And we looked at all these different things and said, oh, that's a small study room because it's multi-purpose. Um, and so that came in. And, sure. Um, um, Marianne, what would you say were the programmatic changes right. between okay. 2009? Right. Um, so I would say, so that that small study room, you know, which for a lot of the different things that people asked for, um, uh, you know, that room um, meets the purpose. People wanted a place where tutors could, you know, where a tutor could meet with students, where small meetings could happen, where people could do remote work, where a, a medical yeah. appointment, an online medical appointment could happen. Um, so, uh, you know, and a place where if somebody was studying for an exam, they could um, study in there. And it's, it's big enough. Um, this is a room that we did have at 150 feet and, um, and 150 feet is big enough for six people. Um, and 200 feet is big enough for eight people. So this room also could be a small board meeting. Um, uh -huh. So, if the library trustees or the historical commission or the council on aging, aging or any other town board, um, you know, wanted to use a room at the library, this room could be used for that. Um, and then the community meeting room um, is, <clears throat> is quite a bit smaller. We had um, a community meeting room of a thousand feet in the building program 10 years ago. Um, and it's 700 feet now. When I look at the data, um, so when I look at the number of programs that we have and the number of people that typically come to our programs, we do have programs with, you know, more than 50 or 60 people. This 700 feet is going to be a room that will comfortably seat 50 people, it could maybe seat 60 people. Um, uh, um, you know, we do have programs that are bigger than that, but they're not the norm. Um, so, so making a meeting room that is big enough for most of our programs is the goal this time. And then we've written some instructions into the plan that it would have some big, you know, wide double doors that could open and there could be overflow into the body of the library. Um, and and if occasionally we have a program that we know is going to be a very, very big program, then we use one of those other spaces in town. Um, but um, but we, um, you know, we heard, um, we tried to listen to all of the voices and some of the voices that we heard were concerned about the size of the overall program and um, and the potential cost of the building. So we looked um for efficiencies everywhere we could and this is an area where um we decided that there could be an efficiency um the program the last time had a local history room um it's not that we didn't get any requests for a local history room this time um we did get a little bit of of that you know that interest expressed um but a local history room is two things. Um, so if if you're going to have a locally history local history room and it's going to have things like archives, that is a, a special that's that's a staffing issue, and um, and we are designing a library that can be staffed by the same size staff that we have now, um, and the same size staff that we have now is not equipped to take on town archives. Now that doesn't mean that we won't have local history in the library. It'll just be in the regular stacks like it is now. Um, so, and, and, you know, and there can be more of it because there'll be more room. So those are the big changes, um, you know, and then, when we, when I was thinking about the 
this building program. Um, and I, I wrote all of the area descriptions. Um, I, I didn't, I honestly did not look at the old building program as a reference. I, um, I didn't look at it until after I was done, um, until after we started trying to make this apples to apples chart. Um, and because I just went through and and described all of the areas that we need now. I didn't think about what we needed then. Um, um, and then one thing, so the children's room is 50 feet smaller than last time. Um, uh, for a couple of weeks, it was, a, you know, it was a couple of hundred feet smaller than last time. And then it went back up again because it just wasn't enough space. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. So thank you. What Marianne was talking about, things like the size of the adult collections part of this line, it's partly based on, and the same is true with the children's room, the size of the, the collections part is based on um, formula that the MBLC has. Oh, uh, Jeff, I see your hand. I'll get to you in a second. Um, so we provide the size Marianne provided the the lineal feet of the book storage and they come back and they say well uh that doesn't meet with, fit with this size of space so you something has to adjust and things were adjusted in that way and I wanted to underscore what Marianne said at the end at some point somebody said um something that I took a reference to well of course you're designing it in contrast or is similar to or something to last year. And, and my answer is just like Marianne's, when we worked on it with the library trustees, we started from scratch and we put all this together independently. And then I made the chart and then we could say, oh, uh, it's smaller. Um, but we were not deliberately trying to be smaller or bigger or in even different. We were trying to fit to his needs. Um, uh, so Jeff, you have a question. I see your hand up. Sure, thank you. Um, it, it, just, a, just a couple, the, the, the adult collections, which I, I, I guess I'm the most interested in because I'm an adult and I go to libraries for books mostly. Um, did the formula change uh, so that 190 feet would be shaved off of that from from uh, 2009 to 2021, um, I wonder why that that went down. That, I mean, to me anyway, it seems like the heart of the library is its is its collection where you can browse around and find a book. If you're an adult, which is probably who are mostly going to be going there. So that I, well, I think let, let, answer... let, let me just ask a a, a a couple of questions. Okay, that, that are similar. Um, Circulation desk, reception and browsing area. I can see reception, but what are we, what are we browsing there? Um, are we browsing the collection? Are we browsing um, new new arrivals? Or what exactly is the browsing? So that's one other question. I guess another question would be that the community meeting room, which I thought was a particularly valuable uh, part of this this library has has gone down considerably in size and just wondering how that how that squares with other libraries in the area and if they're satisfied with their uh, community meeting room and and its adequacy for for their programs i mean just for reference 700 feet is roughly 24 by 28 it's pretty much what kate cell is sitting in right now the room that she's in is about 700 square feet for reference. Um, and then the last question is the children's room. Um, that's a huge area in the library. Um, I have nothing against children. I have some, but um, <laughs> it's um, you know a very small percentage of the families in, in Chutesbury, the households in Chutesbury have children. We have an enormous area for them. So, so what exactly is going on in the, in the children's 
the children's room. Is that the children's collection as well within that room? And, and then seating areas or something? So those are my four questions. Okay. Um, I'll start off. Uh, some of these I can't answer. Um, um, I feel like what we've done as trustees, what Marianne has done is a balancing act right through from the start to now, um, um, balancing out somebody's request for something that sounds like more and somebody else's request that sounds like, well, let's be careful. Um, those are two sides that have come up constantly. Um, be careful, don't grow too much. I'm worried about the tax rate compared to, but we need this space. And so we've been weaving this line between the two as, as carefully as we could. And as I said, um, we didn't do things like uh, that adult collections line specifically in reference to the last um, program, building program. We started from scratch and said, what do we need? And uh, I know Marianne was um, looking at I, what other, what sizes, what somewhat comparable sizes, it's, it's like this chart, they're hard to compare, but uh, getting a sense of um, what other libraries have. And I, I also know that one of the things she started from was our volume of collection and our volume of borrowing. Um, those were both criteria and neither one said directly um, neither one said we can make the adult clutch smaller because we didn't make it smaller we made it what it sounded what it felt like us to us it needed the the flip Jeff the flip to your question comparing 2009 to 2021 with the adult collections is well why did they make it so big in 2009 what was the what was the intention of having it be more than it seems necessary and i can't answer that either um if you if you compare spaces too closely uh, it's an interesting answer but anyway um uh marianne i think you I'm looking at this uh, Jeff's list. Uh, adult collections being smaller, the browsing area, what is it? What is it for? Community eating room. Um, I wrote that's down. Smaller. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, what would you say to those? Okay. So, so Jeff, if you add up um, the adult collections and the. Um, the periodical adult seating area and the, let's see, there was one, oh, the adult reading nook. It comes out to 860 square feet, which is, you know, just 40 feet shy of the children's room. Um, and then there's also the small study room and the community meeting room that would be used by adults. The adult collection area um, has room for, 6,000 books, um, about double our current collection. Um, and then, um, I'm, I'm, so I think it's 400 audiobooks and 2,000 DVDs, which is the same size as our current collection. We're not anticipating that those collections will grow um, uh, because those formats um, are not the format of the future. Um, so, um, and, uh, and what I, how I determined the adult collection size is I looked at our current use um, and I compared our current use to peer libraries. Um, and then I looked at our collection and I looked at the collections of peer libraries um, and our circulation is higher than most of our peer libraries, our adult circulation, um, but our collection size was smaller. So I chose a collection that was um, on the high end of collection sizes for adult books, for adult print books. Um, and 
So actually 460 square feet is enough floor space for 6,000 books plus the audio and the video. Um, because adult collections can be on shelves that are six shelves high. Um, uh, so that's the adult collection area. Um, and then the reception and browsing, that'll be like in the front of the circulation desk when you first come into the library and that'll be new books and, um, and then seasonal collections. So, you know, the, the Halloween books might be there or the gardening books might be there in the spring or the, um, you know, the women's history books might be there during Women's History Month. Um, um, so that's what that area is. It's, um, you know, it's just a, sort of a, that kind of, that new book area that we have in the library, only a little bit bigger um, now. Um, and Jeff, we serve a lot of children um, at our library. I, I wouldn't say that, um, that it's gonna be mostly adults who use the library. Um, I, there, are, there are a lot of adults who come to the library and there are a lot of children who come to the library. We circulated 11,000 children's books last year. Um, and I think we circulated 6,000 adult books. Um, so now sometimes children's books are 32 pages um, and they, they read a lot of them. Um, and, um, but um, we serve a lot of children and, and children's books, they take up more floor space because they can't be shelved as high. So, um, so the highest children's shelves are four shelves high and then picture books, early readers, um, board books are two shelves high. So that takes up a lot of floor space and that's part of why the children's room needs more room. And then the children's room includes the seating. Um, and all of those other things that in the adult section are described in different lines. Um, let's see, um, the community meeting room size. The community meeting room size is 700, 700 square feet. It's the same size as the Irving Library commuting meet, community meeting room. It's 100 feet bigger than the Levert Library's community meeting room. Their room is 600 feet. Um, uh, and, um, and, and oh, it probably is quite a bit bigger, it's probably quite a bit bigger than Wendell, I would imagine. Oh, it's much bigger than Wendell. Wendell's yeah, meeting yeah. room is, is small. Well, um, yeah. so, so it is, it is on the bigger side of meeting rooms. I'm going to, um, right now, our plan does not call for anything in the community meeting room. So it's a big empty room that, you know, it'll have a table and some chairs set up for, but, but mostly it's gonna be a big empty room that is set up for programs and then stuff is put away. It's not gonna have cabinets on the walls. It's not gonna be cluttered. Like it's, this room is also similar to the room at town hall. Um, if you measure from the edge of the furniture. So, um, so it's, it's big enough to do most of what we do. Um, it's not big enough to do all of what we do. Um, in fact, I had a program on Saturday that, that, that wouldn't fit in this room. Um, but, but, we, but we're also gonna ask, so that Wendell Library has those big double doors on one end and then people can spill into the body of the library. I think that's an excellent model. And mm -hmm. that's a model we've described in our plan. Um, and Jeff, the other thing is we had community meetings about all of the program areas as we were describing them. And the videos, the recordings of those are all on the website. Um, and, um, and so you could, you could go to the Small Library Project Web page and look at those recordings of the area descriptions, um, and you know, and I even did PowerPoint presentations about how I came up with the um, the numbers for the adult collection and how I came up with the numbers for the children's room collection. Um, Great. And let's see, I think that's all the questions you asked. 
Yep, that was it. And I appreciate the answers and I appreciate you doing this. Marianne, can I, or Brad, can I add one thing to what Marianne yep. said, which is that actually, mm -hmm. I believe the way we're planning it, a small piece of the adult collection is going to be in the children's room. And that is the books on parenting and child care and early child care are going to be in the children's room. Is that right, Marianne? So that's another reason why that book is bigger. It's encompassing a part of what's now in the adult collection. Um, okay. Marianne, did you want to comment on that? No, okay. Uh, no, Susie, that's right. I see your hand. Yep, that's correct. Okay, great. Susie, what, what would you, what yeah, do you I want to ask? I'd like to point out that um, the work on this building program is a cumulative um, learning curve from um, the effort made in 2009, then 10 years of experience especially with an eye of having gone through designing what a building program is supposed to be. And so, um, and being able to look at other libraries, um, it's clear in the building program um, document that's on the website that there was a lot of research and there's a lot of data that supports it. But there's also been a lot of experience that um, having done it in 2009, I think this, this effort has been even more detailed and it's also been driven by a lot more experience. I think it helped, I mean, just on that score, I think it helped that we did the 2009 building program and then the whole exercise with the architect, the schematics, um, because that's a learning exercise in its own right. Um, and those were in our sort of, um, back minds, I suppose I would say, when we're starting this. We weren't doing direct comparisons, but we'd learned the lessons already. We were, we were working from those lessons. So thanks, Susie. Any other particular questions about how this all goes? Um, you can... Um, if you have questions later on, you can let us know. Um, Kate, do you have the, I don't have the address, the, um, the, the comments address for the, the trustees. Can you put that in the chat? I just did, Brad. Oh, you just did. Okay. I need to yeah. open my chat. Trustee mind meld. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I see the chat. Okay. Thank you. It, when I'm sharing my screen, I see something different. The, the, the chat's over here. Uh, so anyway, thank you. Perfect. Um, it's an iterative process. We've said this before. Um, I see we one keep question, talking about Brad. changes. Yep. Carolyn? Well, I can, I can wait. Do you want to finish your sentence? I'm, I'm, that's enough. <laughs> oh, okay. It's on a little bit of a different topic. I'm wondering... Yeah when um, MBLC looks at the application, um, can they decide to increase the space? And what would you do? Considering that it's, it's quite contentious in town, I'm just wondering like what does happen in, in these cases? I don't know. Well, again, know? I'll give you my answer and then I'll see. It might not totally match Marianne's. This is my perspective. Um, Marianne has been doing more, more of the much, much more of the work. She's the one that talks with MBLC. But before it becomes a formal application, um, throughout uh, since late September through October and through all of this month, uh, Marianne has been taking drafts to the MBLC. I, I know because I get I help with the final formatting each time, okay. and then it goes off. And they come back and they say, well, Marianne, we really think this should be bigger. And Marianne says, well, MBLC, here's why. And it's a give and take. It's not that Marianne wins all the time or that MBLC wins all the time, but it's a, 
a give and take to try to come to a, a, a meeting ground. Um, I think what I've watched in the spaces that have changed a little bit is every now and then, then I've heard something from Marianne where she says they really think this should be bigger. And mm -hmm. a little later, it might grow a little bit. Um, um, anyway, uh, sometimes it's based on data. Uh, Kate, I see you. I'll get to you in a second, too. Um, I remember Marianne um, talking about how um, the MBLC said we couldn't do something we were planning. It just was not part of the code for doing libraries the way we had hoped to have space at the end of aisles. They said, you can't count it that way. Um, so I don't think we wait until uh, the formal application. Um, there may be more after that, um, but the big thing afterwards, I think gets when we get to the, the working with an architect because they're gonna be trying, that firm will try to put things together and mm -hmm. things are gonna shift with that process. Um, Kate, do you wanna add something? Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. What we've seen is that sometimes the MBLC will say, you know, you haven't calculated it this way. This is the standard we suggest or the rule of thumb. They've also found efficiencies for us though. And there have been some places which they're like, oh, you don't, you don't really need that. So they are, in my experience, holding tight to their mission of helping us come up with a building program that would specify a library that's appropriate for us that is efficient and cost effective. And um, I've been pretty pleased with the way that their this give and take has been going. I, I, it's easy for me to say please because I haven't been doing it, but um, but with the results of the give and take, uh, I would say because like I said, there's been some times when they found deficiencies and they, and I, I think that saying, you know, this is not gonna quite work because you're not gonna be able to turn a wheelchair around the way you think or whatever. That's also an efficiency in terms of making the space work for what the population needs. I like seeing people when I have, when I'm a co-host and I have, I'm sharing my screen, I, I, I can't see you so well. Um, it's not so much whether you have your, your camera on, it's just that I can't see the people who are Listed. Does anyone need my chart anymore? We can keep talking and I can bring it back. No, I'll, I'll take it down for now. If people want to see it again, I'll bring it back up. Uh, now I can see this big tile of all of you. That's very nice. So any other, it's also easier to see if there's questions. Any other questions, comments? No? As I said earlier, feel free to write to us and ask. Um, Marianne, did you, I answered that last question, yeah. Carolyn's question. Do you have anything to add to that? No, why don't I just sort of say what the next steps are as we understand them right now. Um, so, so, the, so the building program is, is 99.99999% finished. Um, you know, I think anybody who would read it would find something, you know, a comma, an extra space, uh, a word. Um, uh, so somebody found libraries that was supposed to be libraries, Y apostrophe S written out as libraries, IES. Um, uh, today. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, sometimes we capitalize things and sometimes we don't. So there's, there's always going to be things like that, but it's, it's close. Um, you know, I, the, I'm not, there may be a programmatic change, you know, a little bit, but there, but nothing, nothing substantive is going to change with the building program between now and um, and then if we're offered the grant and it passes town meeting and we go to design. Um, uh, the grant application is due December 3rd. Um, I'm working on the grant application. Another trust, a trustee is working on the grant application. The trustees are going to 
have their final vote on the whole grant application on Monday evening. And then the select board is going to, um, we're going to give the application to the select board and they will vote on, on it on Tuesday, November 30th. Um, and then we have to get some actual um, signatures from trustees and select board members. Um, and then it gets submitted to the MBLC. Um, you know, by 5 p.m. on, or I think it's 4 p.m. on December 3rd. So it's it's next week. Um, so this has been a, a, a short amount of time to do something like this. Um, and it's been, uh, it's been a whirlwind. Um, but we've, um, we haven't quite done it yet, but we're close. I have one more thing to write and, um, and somebody else is probably writing something as we're doing this. Um, and um, and I, I think we've done a good job. I think we've done a lot of community outreach. Um, I think the trustees have been incredible. They've met um, weekly since September. There was one week when they met twice um, and they're gonna meet twice next week. Um, and, um, and I, you know, so we're gonna, we're gonna submit it. And then, then in early January, the Board of Library Commissioners will come out and visit us and ask questions. And so the review team, they'll actually come and see our tiny little library. They'll visit the site. Um, and, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll see. It's, we have a 50% chance. All of my fingers are crossed. Um, so, um, so, you know, we're hopeful. Um, I'll put one last invitation if there's um, any questions. <laughs> Carolyn, yes. Yeah, what, me again. Um, fine. By, uh, by any chance, do you know, like, um, is Otis still in the running? As far as we know. They're, they're working hard. Okay, just wondering. Yeah. So does he sign it's, Jeff um, or a question? <laughs> oh, there I go. Um, okay, Jeff. Is, is, is Otis a similar size town um, to us? Do they, do, and do they have a, a little library like we do? Or are they a pretty comparable town? I know they're out in the Berkshires, the Berkshire foothills. Um, Otis is about the same size as Shootsbury. You know, so this this grant op opportunity was only available to towns with less than two thousand people, um, uh, and they do have a tiny little library. It is bigger than ours. Um, it does have running water, but not potable water. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so, um, you know, their, their library is a mini net member of CW Mars, um, like ours is, um, so I don't know much about the town of Otis, so. Okay. Well, maybe some of the, some of the, uh, the running water and the size things will work in our favor. Who knows? Sounds like they have a little more than we do. So. Um, I, you may be a little more. Um, so Otis needs a library too. Um, and so, um, you know, it, it's, um, I think, uh, I think, and they have, you know, they have sort of a supportive town. Um, so, um, so we'll see. I, I don't, what the one thing I haven't liked about this process um, is that I'm in competition with another town. The previous grant round, everybody who applied and and you know and gathered all of the appropriate data and uh, got was awarded a grant, you know, a provisional grant. I mean, there's still it, it takes years to work through them, um, and this is a competitive process, and um, and I, I wouldn't say that 
one of us deserves a library more. I think we've covered the questions. Um, I thank you all for coming out and talking with us. It's great to see you. Um, unless there are more questions, we'll call it a night. I, um, um, as my last bit, uh, particularly because I've been so involved in the very last stage, the formatting stage of each new draft, um, I just want to put in a, a plug for Marianne. The, the work she's put into this is tremendous, it really is tremendous. And it's, it's nice, it's great working with the fellow trustees. We've, we don't always agree with each other, um, but we come to an agreement. Um, we come with different um, mindsets, which is really a value. We come with different mindsets and work through them. And um, it's a, it, I, I, I like that. Uh, um, so it's great having you all come. It's nice to see the uh, townspeople. Um, Kate, did you have a comment? Yeah, I, I just want to reiterate that last point. We've had some great public participation and conversation about this project. We've done a lot of different efforts to reach out and people have made a lot of effort to reach out to us. And um, I think it's made this whole process that much stronger and more transparent. Um, and there've been a lot of community members who've been working really hard to um, sort of watchdog us. And I think it's helped. I really do believe that. And um, I'm grateful to my fellow trustees and I'm particularly grateful to Marianne as well. And I'm sure I, we, Brad and I are speaking for all of the trustees when we say, it's absolutely miraculous how Marianne's been able to pull this depth and detail of work together in the amount of time and to coordinate all the volunteer contributions to it. So thank you very much, Marianne. This chart that we talked about tonight that we started with really came out of community questions. Um, I, I remember when the first time the question came up, my reaction was, we can't do that. It, they're just not comparable. And then Tim Logan, made a, an attempt and then Tim and Michelle made an attempt and I said oh oh yes uh we can get there and but it took a lot of work to take these lists that and then line them up anyway thank you all and um we'll see you all later mm -hmm. thanks everybody good, good night everyone thanks Brad. Good, night. good night thank you yeah. thank you Brad Thank you all. Well done. I'm going to stop recording. How do we do that? Um.